hi, Jakey Steve here, the long-haired freaky dude. Today I'm reviewing book two of Euclid's Elements, translated into English by Thomas L. Heath. If you thought book one was easy, well, book two is gonna be much harder. Sure, it's only a quarter of the length of the first book and it only introduces a few new definitions, but gosh golly, the 14 propositions in here are incredibly hard to visualize. The proofs, that is. Well, the construction of the propositions themselves are very easy to make. Making sense of the proofs is a very mind-numbing task. The logic here is very dense and hard to dig through. I think it's simply because there's a lot of variables. My mind kept wanting to visualize it in a numerical way and convert the words and variables into equations. As to where the last book dealt mainly with angles and triangles and such, this book deals solely with squares and rectangles. And a difficult thing about this is converting those shapes in our mind that is into these letter variables. For example, it took me forever to gather that the meaning of a rectangle contained by two segments on the same line meant to construct a rectangle out of those two segments. In other words, segment A by segment B equals rectangle. Perhaps it's the translation I'm having difficulty with and not the actual elements itself. But see, I just created an equation. <laughs> and ultimately, that's what I did with a majority of these proofs. It just helped a lot more in understanding them, and I really wish there were equations already included in here, but unfortunately, alas, they are not. I know, shame on me, but I suppose I'm finding out this late in my life, and I'm a visual learner. Then again, simply drawing the figures wasn't enough. I had to convert the proofs to equations, then transcend those to the images constructed by my own hand. It was very tedious. I have no idea what you call it, but it worked. I ultimately, finally understood what these proofs were trying to get at. So while working through this book, I strongly suggest doing what works best for you, based on your own learning styles and such. You know yourself best, so devise your own plan. If you can simply read through these proofs and be able to understand them, good for you. But if not, which is probably the case, do what you can to understand them. It's what the purpose is of reading the elements. Not to just know the propositions, but to know the whys of the proofs be able to understand the proofs. If you just want to know a proposition and what something is, go read a crummy math textbook. So for my general understanding of book two, it deals a lot with the ratios of squares and rectangles and how they can fit into one another. I know it's not a perfect description of it, but essentially it's like the geometric equivalent of the algebraic quadratic formula. You know, a squared plus 2 times a times b plus b squared, things like that. Essentially, we start with proving that a rectangle equals, well, a rectangle. It seems like a silly easy proof, and it might seem unnecessary, but it actually is necessary, and ultimately builds up to the climax and conclusion of this book, which is essentially finding a square root. Before this, I didn't even know that one could find a square root mathematically, without guessing, that is. I was never taught how to find the square root in school other than to guess, you know, like, is it too high, is it too low? Good, go in the middle. Is that too high, is that too low? Go in the middle again, you know, guesswork. This is an actual proof to get to the square root. How exciting is that? And of course, it doesn't outright say it, that would be too easy. But ultimately, that's what it's getting at. And once again, these can't always be translated into perfect insert number equations. So I suppose that might be part of the reason why we weren't taught it. So again, this is a book dealing with plain geometry, much like book one, but more algebraic in nature. And much more brain melting. <laughs> Allow yourself some time with this one, my friends. So my questions to you are, what helped you out in working through and understanding these proofs? This is what helped me out constructing each one and writing down a summary of the proof. It was very complicated, but ultimately it got through my mind. And what proofs in book two are applied in today's world? Well, my friends, I thank you for watching this book review. If you like it, be sure to hit that awesome thumbs up button down below. And if you want to see reviews of Euclid's other books as I read through them, or reviews of other books in general, or cooking tutorials, then might I suggest checking out my channel and hitting the subscribe button. And if reading books like this are your cup of tea, it's empty.
Oh, man. Then might I suggest taking the Great Books Challenge. I'm sure it's something you would love to do. If you watch this far into the video, I know it is something you'll love to do. Well, I'm Jake Steve, the long-haired freaky dude. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Do you hear that? That's my lizard taking a crap right now. You should be honored to hear this on film. It really sounds icky. It's like... It's just sizzling out of his butt. Oh my god. Do you have to crap while I'm filming, Elsie? That reeks. Oh my god. Ugh.